Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Tuesday now, the 26th day of October 2021. Hope your day is going well. We've got a lot to talk about. Not much going on in the tropics, of course, because things have abruptly shut down, much to the surprise of pretty much everyone. I don't have the answers as to why that happened, and I think sometimes it's good to say I don't know when it comes to science, because if you just make stuff up, then that serves nobody. Uh, but there is stuff to talk about. We'll get into that. Some tropical stuff, you know, a little bit anyway, and a lot of lower 48 weather. So let's get on with it and see what's happening out there this fine Tuesday afternoon. All right, so looking at this, this is called the true color or natural color uh, shot, the satellite imagery from Tropical Tidbits. No, there's nothing down in the western deep tropics or the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico nice and clear, even the eastern Pacific now that Rick has made landfall over the weekend in Mexico, nice and clear across the East Pack. So we will be watching this, a very potent mid-latitude coastal storm, uh, a nor'easter as we call it, and we're going to talk about labels in just a moment. And we're also going to have to watch this area through here for the threat of severe weather today, this area tomorrow, and this area on Thursday. And then we're going to take a look at some impacts that took place over the weekend in the Pacific Northwest. So a busy overall schedule today on the update. First of all, in the Atlantic, 40% chance this develops some subtropical characteristics, basically that this could get a name. And let me just talk about that as I step up onto my soapbox for a minute. We name things to classify them scientifically for public awareness, all kinds of reasons why mankind has to label stuff. Most of it is very, very useful because it helps to keep up with categorization, what's what, which, which is which, and the historical database and all of that. In this situation, the name is irrelevant. It is a strong coastal storm. It is going to impact a lot of people. And at the end of the day, that is what I need you, right there, I'm talking to you, to pay attention to. You need to be selfish when it comes to the weather. It's just like when you were on a commercial airplane and they say, hey, in the unlikely event that the oxygen masks drop down or whatever, you think of all the times I've flown that I've memorized that by now, but I digress. Uh, and they say, put it on you first before helping others. Well, the weather is the same way. You need to be informed right here, absorb as much as you can, and then you can sort of, through osmosis, you know, just the filtration of your knowledge to other people inform them as well. We call that sharing on social media. You talk about it in text messages to people. You might share a video, you know, again, the social media aspect. But the weather is bigger than you. And so whatever we name this doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that is a big deal right there. It's got a lot of lightning in it, a lot of wind. There's been heavy rain over parts of New Jersey again, flooding, swift water rescues, etc. It's going to be a big nuisance up here for eastern parts of Massachusetts. I fully expect to see Situate, Marshfield, and vicinity have some big wave action. Some of the storm chasers that will be up there, I'm sure we'll see some of that B-roll on uh, social media and the Weather Channel, etc. It's coming. And so, you know, you can name this whatever you want. You know, nor'easter, coastal storms, uh, bomb storm, uh, subtropical storm, Wanda, if it ever gets that name, whatever. You know, that's a scientific way of keeping up with what's what. At the end of the day, this is going to affect a lot of people up through here. The coastal waters, the sword fishing fleet that comes out of Gloucester, anybody coming out of Canada, the shipping lanes, you name it. This is a big deal. And I like that little, you get that, you name it, right? Ha ha. But seriously, this is a big event. You can see it reflected in the National Weather Service uh, homepage here. Uh, storm warnings, all kinds of uh, other patchworks of watches and warnings for New England and vicinity. I'll zoom in here on the clickable map. High wind warnings in the brown areas. The storm warnings is this purple for the coastal waters. And then high wind watch, the flooding, etc. The coastal flooding is in there. Just an assortment of issues associated with this system. You can see the radar. Here's a nice little infographic that the Weather Service out of Boston Norton put together. And it gives you, you know, the timeline, the current area of time, basically. The present is on the left, the future is on the right. And this little uh, infographic of laying out what to expect 
when and where. It's a big deal. It really, really is. And if it was winter, a lot of this would be in blue up here. You'd see the snow, but there's not enough cold air, obviously, because it's just late October. Um, and there's a lot of warm water sitting out here, uh, anomalously warm for this to tap into as well. Uh, this is the current map as of the 12Z GFS. We put this out into the future. And you see it kind of pivots around, might try to isolate itself out the, the low pressure area uh, in a couple of days as it moves that counterclockwise loop and heads back out into the uh, northwest Atlantic. And at that time, maybe it gets classified as a name storm, subtropical storm, Wanda. But again, that doesn't matter in the scheme of things. What matters is the impacts coming today, tonight, and tomorrow, literally for millions of people. You're going to have a lot of people without power up there, especially in eastern Massachusetts, the big waves, the beach erosion, power lines down. I mean, it's going to be a mess. And you got some big cities up there, anywhere from northern New Jersey, the New York metropolitan area, Long Island, through Connecticut, you know, Boston, Massachusetts, you name it going to be a big problem. So I wish I could be up there, but I can't. And so I need you guys to be ready. Maybe you can record some stuff, share it on social media, tag me if you want to. Just be careful out there. Uh, once we get into winter and we get these big time winter storms up there, you bet I will certainly be covering those in person. So that's the northeast storm. Let's broaden out just a little bit here. And um, I kind of gave away the ending there. And look at the tropics, you know, all through here, basically just straight trade winds. And they're not even that strong, you know, maybe 10 to 20 knots coming right through the Caribbean. Most of the energy is up here in the higher latitudes and no real pockets of energy coming through in the lower latitudes. As you can see, the trades are just coming right on through, almost just a perfect straight line. Uh, any areas of energy just seem to get buried into South America. Uh, that's part of the issue, if you will, if you want to, you know, if you're looking for development, that's part of the reason why we're not seeing any is these tropical waves are just too far south. They're getting suppressed to the south. And to move this through over the next several days, look at all the energy going by in the northern part of the, of the map uh, on the GFS 12Z run today. And we're way out beyond the normal realm here of, of reasonable forecast accuracy, sure. But just moving out in time, you see nothing at all catches your eye down here as wrapping up, bundling the energy. And, you know, we keep saying, uh, oh, we'll wait a couple weeks out the MJO, the Kelvin waves may be coming. I mean, we're running out of time. It's like being down in a game by nine or ten points or more. And you like, oh, yeah, we, have, we always have the next inbounds play. Maybe we'll do well on that. Or as soon as we get the ball back, maybe we can catch up. Clock's eventually going to run out. And hurricane season will officially come to an end in about a month. Yes, there's still time left, and we could get some development. But I'm not seeing anything, honestly. Not a lot of chatter about it on Storm2K or on Twitter. Good sources of information if you know who to follow. And it's just not happening. So we will continue to focus on lower 48 weather, which is another aspect of what I do. I'll talk about that towards the end um, you know, where, where do we go? What do we do when hurricane season's over? Well, believe me, there's plenty. So here's a good example of that. Today we're going to have some severe weather. It looks a lot like May out there, April or May. But this is serious. 5% tornado threat in the brown area. The wind damage and the hail potential pretty high, especially the large hail in this hatched area. Not a large geographic region, but that's a pretty big deal there. Some big time hail, so pay attention to that. People that live out there, they generally know. They do. They're pretty on top of it, but just making you aware of it. Tomorrow, it, the severe threat shifts to the I 10 corridor down here and vicinity. Uh, a few dozens of miles either side of the I 10 corridor. Pretty large geographic region, including the greater Houston area, seriously now, of tornado. You know, Jeff Lindner. And others um, down in Texas, people, people that follow Jeff Lindner, Harris County Flood Control District uh, meteorologist there, very, very adept and good at communicating. And there's others in the Houston area. You know who they are. Pay attention because it could be, that's a lot of people. Four million people live in Houston uh, and, and vicinity. Wind damage threat, you know, that's, again, a large area. The hail, luckily, not as impactful down there because the dynamics are just not the same. 
Finally, moving out towards the end of the week, that would be what, Thursday? Day three, Thursday. Uh, my neck of the woods, potentially here in southeast North Carolina, and then over here in Florida. And I suspect this could get edged a little farther to the south. We'll wait and see. But point being, it's that time of year. We still have all this warm water out there. And in a lot of areas, it is two to three degrees Fahrenheit, Celsius. It doesn't really matter at this point. It's much warmer than we're used to seeing. And that warm water represents energy. And now that we are starting to get the change of seasons even more noticeable, much more cold air intrusion uh, intrusions coming out of Canada, that clash of the air masses in the southern part of that being moisture-laden air. And remember, moisture, water holds, you know, water vapor holds heat and energy. Think about a steamed up, well, a steam room or your bathroom. You take a nice hot shower in the winter and the bathroom's nice and steamed up. It's like, yes, that feels so good compared to the evaporative cooling that you get with a dry bathroom. That's heat contained in those water droplets. And all that warm water is going to lead to, I think, a very busy winter storm season. we got the Great Lakes up here that have all been pretty warm because of the anomalously warm fall that we've had. So the lake effect snow machine coming off the lakes here over the coming months. Yeah, there's a lot to pay attention to as we go forward, including what happened up in the Pacific Northwest recently, which is a great lead-in to this tweet from Andrew Friedman that a massive, I mean, that was really incredible, almost Hollywood-esque, how big that storm was. Look at that. That's not computer generated. You know, well, it is in terms of, you get, it's not fake, put it that way. It, does, it looks like a Hollywood thing, like the day after tomorrow. But that was a big storm off the Pacific Northwest. And one of our supporters, and uh, just this guy has done so much for our project, Chris Palmer, went out to the coast there. Look at all those birds. This is his vehicle cam. And um, you get these long waves that come in, these very long sets that have a lot of energy off the Pacific. And that the birds knew that it was coming. That should have been Chris's first clue. <laughs> he was fine, but he, he I've done this before. We're like, whoops, um, might want to get out of here. So yeah, the uh, the waves ran up there, displacing all those birds. They're like, hey, we were trying to chill out and pick off the sea life. Uh, so Chris and um, I don't know if he was with his son or another colleague of his, but uh, they drove out of there and they were just fine. I guess you can drive down to the beach there in some areas of the Pacific Northwest. You can on the east coast of the US. We know that, but see, there's other people out there. They're just checking things out. Nothing wrong with that. We're curious creatures, us humans, but you just gotta be careful. And he's got a nice truck. He knew what he was doing. So I appreciate him sharing that with me. But this is the time of year that we're gonna be transitioning towards more of that, more impacts for the lower 48 from temperature differences in the atmosphere instead of tropical cyclones. And so that leads me to this as we move forward. This is where we are today. I don't show this map often. You know, usually it's the 850 millibar vorticity and it's the tropics. So what the heck are we looking at here? Well, this is your temperature anomalies, departures from the average at about two meters, six feet. I'm not quite six feet tall. I wish I was, that'd be kind of cool, but whatever. So that's where we live. That's where we live and breathe. We're all about, you know, within a few inches, six feet, two meters, right? So these are anomalies. These are cold anomalies for today. Warm anomalies here, very warm over here. And look, you can already see the dividing line moves through, and that's where you get some severe weather. You understand? And so let's watch how this progresses over time and see what happens as we move forward. A large area develops over the southeast as we get towards Halloween. Yes, heights fall and colder air comes down. But then, after about a week, a very large area of anomalously cold temperatures starts to set up over the plains, spilling into New Mexico, the northern, southern high plains, you name it, the Rockies, as a very large chunk of dense Canadian air sinks out of Canada, moves out of Canada, that dense air moves. It's thick. It's like molasses spreading across a table. 
and it does that and it moves as the heights change in the atmosphere the wavelengths meteorology is incredible so we're going to watch this as it evolves and that will lead us into the off season eventually where we won't talk as much about hurricanes but more about lower 48 weather and so forth so i invite you as we segue into my closing keep following on the twitter and whatever they rename this <laughs> the facebook i joked about that the other day and YouTube has really grown a lot over the last few years. And we're going to do more and more with YouTube. And I invite you to subscribe, like, share, notify, you know, put that little bell thing on. I think the gamers say that more than I've ever seen before in my life. My kids watch them and others that, you know, put out interesting stuff. But this is a very interesting world we live in where if you follow people that you can trust and rely on for good BS free, information uh because there's a lot of bs out there you know that and that's what we're all about it's the science the interest you know i followed my passion from a kid all the way up now i'm almost 51 years old if you can believe that and there's a lot of kids that follow what i do a lot of 51 year olds and even older than that and it's great so we're going to transition away from the hurricanes and more towards lower 48 weather and as i like to say the hurricanes are the Super Bowl, if you want to look at a sports analogy. The off season is the regular season games. You understand that schedule of NFL games or whatever the sport is, basketball, college football, you know, football in the UK, as they call it, right? Um, you get the regular seasons, you get the championship season, etc. All those games matter. So we're going to spend the off season moving towards that goal of being better prepared technologically, our social media stature, uh, the capability of live streaming, and just what can we do to do things better. We use the off-season to practice that, and I hope you'll stick around and be a part of that, because it can be very exciting as we progress through these big impact storms. All right, so that is it from me for today. Good to be back in here. Um, we'll see how things evolve. We're getting ready to end October and we will go from there see how things shape up it's going to get cold and stormy you know it and we will be covering it all have a great rest of your tuesday a great rest of your week i'll be back tomorrow and this is not the end or anything just kind of setting things up for where we're going to go from here that being said i'm done i'm mark sudduth hurricanetrack.com thanks for watching i'll be back with more for you tomorrow